Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to another Bloomboro draft here on the channel. Today we're playing some best of three, so you'll learn some stuff about sideboarding and slower, grindier gameplay. But we're going to be diving on in, going pick by pick and play by play. I'm also streaming this live on Twitch, so if you are uh, going to, if you, you'll see me talking to viewers and answering questions and things like that. Our rare Essence Channeler, not my favorite card. It does work well in the bats deck when you're gaining life, specifically with a card like Life Creed Duo. And that would be like a good synergy. Like if I first picked Essence Channeler and Wield Life Creed Duo, that could be a good combo. But sometimes it's hard to get this to be anything but a two mana two one. It does require a lot of work. There is also a Rabid Gnaw, which is a very good card. There's a Curious Forager, which is a very good card. And honestly might be the best card. Uh, being able to buy back something is really, really strong. I'm trying to figure out if I could wheel something if I took Curious Forager for a black-green deck. I don't think I could wheel Dagger Fang. Whereas if I took Chandler, I could maybe wheel the Life Creed Duo. I think I'm going to take the Curious Forager, though. This card's great. I'm kind of going full try-hard mode here, just seeing what I can see. But, of course, we can still move into white later if it seems open. Okay. So we started with a green card. The only green card is here. Oh my goodness. 42 month subscription. I really appreciate that. The legend. Oh, thank you so much, Potato Skis. That means a lot. Thank you so much for the support. So we have Curious Forager. Um, Valley Flood Caller is not very good. Cruel Claws Heist is not my favorite either. I think we're just going to take either Hive Spine Wolverine to stay green or take Banishing Light. And I really like the Hive Spine Wolverine. You almost always get some value out of this. Having main deck artifact and enchantment destruction is really nice. And killing tokens is nice. And then just getting a lot of stats is also good. So I think we're going to just take that. I first picked this card before. I think it's good. If I wasn't taking this, I would probably take Banishing Light. And then the pack falls off a cliff, I think. Cultivator's okay. Okay. Hmm. So we have some decisions to make. Decisions, decisions. We have two just good green cards. Last pack had a few blue cards in it. This pack has a Bright Blade Stoat and a Carrot Cake and it has a Root Herbalist. It also has a Pond Prophet and a Tree Guard Duo. I think the main pick, I think Bright Blade Stoat is better than Carrot Cake, and I would take that basically every time. So that the white card I would take is this. I am considering taking Pond Profit, but I think I'll just take the Stoat because I'd rather be green white than green blue. And uh, getting two good white cards in this pack is maybe a signal. And also the Herbalist, which is mostly a green white card. Guard Duo is also good. Okay. We are punished in terms of that pick, but I still think it was correct. Splash Portal would have gone pretty well with the uh, Frog, though I don't think that's a huge miss. We can just take the Corpse Berry Cultivator if we wanted to maybe lean towards Green Black. Dazzling Denial is okay. Hmm. I'll just take the Cultivator. I don't think I want to take this as my first blue card. Just kind of a weak pack. Okay, now we see Take Out the Trash. War and Elder is really good. And then there's t the Treetop Sentries. Red is looking open. These cards can fit nicely into a red deck. Two good white cards, though. Mm. I'll take take out the trash. I think red is starting to look open. Okay, rewarded. Playful Shove pick six is an awesome pick. If I was trying to lean more towards the other colors, I would have gotten a whole lot of nothing. There 
There is an honored dray. There's also a carrot cake. Crumb and get it, I think, might be better for this particular archetype, though, if I was to play red-white. Hmm. Hmm. Red-green doesn't really care about a lot of those things. Blooming blast doesn't really do what I want. I think I'll just take crumb and get it over the carrot cake. Because your mouse deck doesn't exactly want carrot cake as much. It will play a Mabel's Metal, though. This goes well with mice. Rallier. I don't really like War Squeak as a card. So, we passed a lot of good mouse cards. Green has not seemed to overly open. I think red is the most open. It's a tricky draft. Beautiful. Whisker Quill Scribe, I think, is better than Veteran Guard Mouse. Back two. And I think we'll just jam Intrepid Rabbit. Really good card. There's also Jolly Gerbils, which is a nice card, but I think worse than Rabbit. Even though we do have Crumb and Get It for Synergy. There's also Mouse Trapper. Maybe there's only one other white draft when we get one of these back, though that's pretty unlikely. I'm pretty happy to get this, though. I don't think green is open, so I think I'm just going to cut the green cards. I think red is the most open. And white, we were getting some good stuff. Could also play green-red. I don't think red-black is where we want to end up. So far away from where I'm at with the Dream Dew, the Splash Lasher. We're going to take another Crumb and get it. Our creature count's a bit low, but we'll be able to up that, I think. Hello, Suji. Hello, welcome to the stream. Probably going to wheel this. Take head of the homestead, could just take a two drop. I'd rather just get the two drop, I think. Muera. That card's really good. I'm taking it over like a nothing ball for my deck. Like, Bushy Bodyguard. I mean, Bushy Bodyguard also is in the same colors as Moira, and I think I'd rather have Moira than Bushy Bodyguard. <sighs> Maybe I should just do this more often. The Pack 2 Switcheroo Hearthstone Battler is the best card for me now. Because, like, the reason I'm seeing a lot of green here is because the person passing to me in pack one did not pass me any green cards to play. And so now I'm seeing them in pack two, but I'm trying to, like, bank on pack three being good for me. But maybe I should just, like, go full selfishness mode and just get the person. I don't think this card's really what I want. I'll just keep taking Crumb and get it. Really wishing I had Jolly Gerbils at the moment. Feather of Flight, Phineas. <sighs> Why not take Carrot Cake? I don't think Carrot Cake really does what much in my deck. My deck is kind of just like... Play creatures, play combat tricks, and one ones don't necessarily play the best with combat tricks. I 
Menace plays pretty well with combat tricks. This draft has honestly been pretty bad. In terms or not terrible, but just feel like it could have gone better in so many ways. Like kind of weird packs. I only have seven creatures. I'm not wheeling anything for my deck. Really not a good sign. <sighs> this could be gruesome. Well, this card's actually playable for me. Pack 2 was pretty horrific for me. That was a very bad pack 2. This, whenever I get a token, I draw a card. I'll take this guy, just 3-3 three, three that can sometimes buff things. I don't really have rabbits, but it would have worked out a lot better if I did. Oh my gosh. I have a feeling that I'm going to very much so regret everything here. I have one mouse in my deck. Uh-oh. This card doesn't really do much then. Oh gosh. Does work with itself though. If I had some carrot cakes, this would have gone a little bit better. There we go. Right blade stoat. Let's take out the trash. Repel calamity. Gev, otter. This pack great. Yeah, Harvest Right would have liked the carrot cakes a lot. Gev is awesome. I took Intrepid Rabbit over the uh, Jolly Gerbils, and Gerbils in this deck would have been so much better. Uh, okay, interesting pick here between Warren Elder and Banishing Light. I have three, four, five, two drops in, no removal spells. I think I have to take Banishing Light. Now I get Rabbit Bite. Perfect. Another removal spell. This is a clear pick. Yeah, Gecko is also nice, but I had to take a creature. I mean, I had to take a removal spell there. I had no interaction. Feather of Flight. Take out the trash. Sideboard conduct electricity. My creature count is so low. I have 11 creatures. Yikes. It's funny because in retrospect, red white is. I mean, I'm getting. I've got so many white cards and so many red cards. I think both colors were open. Would I rather have Bravekin duo? No, I still probably rather have the kill spell. Phew. Getting another creature there is huge. I've got some really nice cards. And then I have all these green cards that I'm not playing. I started in green. I tried to play green. And I felt like I got cut out of it. Okay, my creature count is at 13. And my non-creature count is at 14. I will play the bell instead of a land. It's like a dual land. Ironically, my creatures are like my worst cards. So I kind of feel like cutting the creatures. But I'm going to cut two crumb and get it and a Fleetfoot Swordmaster. I only have one other mouse. Fleetfoot is just a liability. And now I have 12 and 12. Yep. Mm. Well, we'll see how this does. I don't actually have a lot of things that care about targeting my own stuff, so. 
I literally just have Whisker Quill Scribe. Yeah, this deck feels pretty mid to me, but we'll see how it does. I'll see you folks in the games. Before I get to the games, I want to give a huge shout out to all of the people who support my channel at patreon.com slash Nikolai Bolas. It really does make a big difference, and it really helps me continue making as many videos as I do. If you're interested in becoming a patron, you gain access to some cool rewards when you do become a patron, like my card by card draft tier list for Bloomborough, where I've graded every single card in the set on an A through F scale, as well as a new Patreon reward, the Format Thoughts Doc, which is where I keep track of a bunch of thoughts I have on the format, like individual cards, the archetypes, big picture, things like that, and that'll help you really get a leg up on the format as well. I want to give a special shout out to those patrons who do support at the credits level. I really do appreciate each and every one of you. But without further ado, let's get to the games. Welcome to uh, round one. Be well, Mulligan. Okie doke, we can keep this. Our deck is... It can win, I think, but I don't like it very much. It was a weird draft because I felt like we identified red as being open. Like, we switched into red and we immediately got some stuff. We immediately got some good red cards. We already had some white cards. White felt like it was flowing at least a decent amount. And then pack two, we got, like, literal nothing. Like... Almost as if the person we were passing to switched into red-white exactly. Because we waited too long to get into it. And, like, if we just stuck with green, it would have worked out better. Then we randomly saw, like, black-red cards in pack three, yeah. Well, we're going to win this game. Our opponent is not doing anything. I think this is just the sort of deck that's going to just win some scrappy games. They're playing black, green. De deck is amazing. Best deck in the format. Now they're on a mulligan. A five. Did they mold a four? <laughs> oh my gosh. We've won! I am the greatest! Ah! <laughs> oh. Wow. One of the big upsides of this deck, as we keep this great hand, one of the big upsides of this deck is that we may have kind of like bad cards, but our, we're not going to get a land. We don't need another one. But our our draws can punish the bad starts. So like if our opponent gets off, like our deck is at least like it's mediocre but quick, which is way better than mediocre and slow. So it immediately can like beat decks that stumble. Like our opponent last round, it almost doesn't matter what was in their deck. They like missed a color game one and they weren't gonna be able to recover. Like we punished them. This is not good. At least they whiffed on this guy. We are going to get rid of this guy. Sure. It's 
I can sack this. Hopefully I can use Repel Calamity on something big. Though they don't necessarily play big cards. Okay. Can block anything really that they have right now. It seems like they have a combat trick. One thing in these spots is if your opponent has a combat trick and you can't realistically play around it, you should just block and make them use the combat trick. For me, though, I can play around it, because I have Repel Calamity. So if they go for a Pump Spell, I kind of get them. Here, I'm going to hold up Repel and Mabel's. Opponent can definitely punish me by not attacking, but I need to find one land so I can hold up Repel Calamity and stop their attacks. Yeah, Scales of Shale would be bad for me. True. So I can they probably don't have scales of shale, are they? Or they at least they don't want to go to it and for it and open into open mana. Oh, this is so bad for me, the way this lines up. I'm gonna have to like buff their guy. They have scales of shield, probably. Potentially, at least. They have three, six. Two, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So I can't quite kill them. It is crazy how close I was to killing them, though. I, would, I could this can do three damage. I understand why they buffed the three tree mascot, but if they buffed like anything else, I would have been so toasted. So it's eight. So if they have plus two plus O, oh, then it'll be 12. Then 
If you have plus one plus zero, oh, it'll be ten. Interesting. So they just assume I have no way to buff my flyer. This is lethal because they take three and then this thing has to die and deal one to them. Okay, their deck is totally beatable. Totes beatable. They have two take out the trashes. Oh, yeah, this is definitely the crumb and get it matchup. We are going to decimate them with crumb. They are going to get so crumbs. Um, I think we take out Mabel's Metal just because it's a worse crumbs in this matchup. How many tokens do they have? Not really any. Um, I'm going to shave a land on the draw. We're on the precipice of 2-0. and oh. oh my gosh, you have a Nikolai Bola shirt, Adronius, and nobody asked what it was? That's hilarious. Not that you, not that somebody asked. That's totally reasonable and makes sense. <laughs> You're one of the few that owns such a such an item. Gosh darn it, manifold mouse! I'm still just gonna curve out here. If they have a kill spell for this, they have a kill spell for it, which they probably do. Oh, they don't have a kill spell. Oh my gosh, we're doing it! What do they have in their hand? Um, they have to have, like, Wix Patrol. They have to have, like, several lands. Oh, this is, this is beautiful for me. What are they going to do? The stoat is just soloing them. Like, it has no synergy types, and yet it is almost unbeatable for this deck to beat with the pro proper protection. Sure. Sure. Give me a planes deck. Thank you. Yes! Oh, 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 baby! 2-0! The deck that I doubted is in the finals, where it may be summarily crushed. But we've made it this far. We'll just battle it out. I am going to play the third Crumb and Get It over the first Mabel's Medal, just because of that kind of protection play that we've got set up. Well, we're keeping. We'll just draw spells for the rest of the game. We also have ways to discard extra lands. We've actually have drawn spells every turn, so currently we're in good shape. <laughs> like, 
I don't know. Crum and get it's looking awesome here. Okay. They might have deal four. Basically, the, the the calculus came down to would I rather have Cindering Cutthroat in play or Crum and get it in my hand? And Crum and get it in my hand won. They don't have Crumman, get it. Keep nice. Shoot, I looked away. Did they scry to the top? Um, would I rather kill the Forager or the Head of the Homestead? This can get Squirrel cards, but it will cost them a turn. They don't really have a board stand. I'll kill the Head of the Homestead. Because then my stoke can attack. They also might not have a lot of squirrels in their deck. I know I've certainly had green-white decks that don't really have any squirrels. Bushy Bodyguard, not really a huge issue here for me. We're going to have some giant guys, but I'm at a huge life total and I'm just trying to win in the air. If they had a Reach Creature, I think they would have gotten it. Wow, I can't believe they sacked that.
Oh, they exiled their carrot cake. Yeah, they botched that big time. I think it's an interesting decision whether to kill head, head of the homestead or not. Exiling Carrot was a huge punt by them. But I, I got him. <laughs> Holy heck, we could win this draft. I'm going to bring in Conduct Electricity. Feels like it'll be good against their big guys combined with killing a token every time. And their kill spell, they have a crumb and get it. They have head of the homestead. I hate steam path charger in this matchup. Okay, Zoinks. It's time to go down. Oh my gosh, the dream, <laughs> the stoat plan. Oh my gosh, we're all in on Stoat once more. The feather is a flight. Oh, this is... We literally have the combo. Oh, the Stoat. Oh, thank goodness they didn't kill my guy. The stoat is so good. It's just so super juiced. Nice. Gosh darn it. I played around the deal four to an attacker, not to the killing my flyer thing. Hmm. I think ditching an extra land here is probably worth it. Especially because Stoat already gets to attack so effectively. Use our mana.
Goodbye, stoat. I think letting Stout die to try and protect my Whisker Quill Squab is probably correct. We did it. We went undefeated. We are the masters of the Bloombaro. <laughs> yes. Unbeatable, unbeatable. We didn't even lose a game, did we? We dominated. Oh my gosh, what a dominant victory. Clearly the deck was unstoppable. Jeez, I did not see that coming. I guess, honestly, the Bright Blade Stoat is just a messed up card. I don't think we lost a game. I think we just kind of dumpstered everyone. Does this deck even have a rare? Yes, we have the Hearthborn Battler, which we triggered one time. I mean, I'm not even really counting that as a rare. We drew it once. It was not the fact that we had a rare. This deck is not one of those ones where you're like, oh, I got carried by a rare. It was more just like, I played Stoat and then put Feather of Flight on it. Or played a two drop and put Feather of Flight on it. If you made it to the end of the video, Twitch chat has suggested the hashtag Stowed is Goat to let me know you made it all the way to the end of the video. Um, yeah, this one was wild. I am a little bit stunned that this got the job done, but not complaining. Let's go. Hashtag Stowed is Goat. If you enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe for more, comment with your questions, thoughts, and feedback. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll talk to you next time.